So what does a queer person do in art school? Let's find out, babes. It started on Monday when I thought I was going to be mysterious and cute in the library, but I ended up just looking like a dumbass because I was not being productive at all. But the next day, y'all, I got some work done. I got some cellophane sheets of plastic out and I wanted to redo a previous project I had done. This is like a cellophane sculpture type vibe. I'm using oil paint. This is a previous sketch I did and it's about Asian bottomhood. You know, you know the vibes. Lots to talk about in the first 30 seconds of a YouTube video, but that's what it is, babes. There are really nice textures going on, really nice fluids being collapsed into this like plastic frame. I was thinking a bit about like the plasticity of gender and what that means to me. The plasticity of bodies too, because I'm like, babes, like what is a body? Babes, like what is gender? Asking some questions, not looking for answers really. And I was especially inspired to pursue this even more as a topic because of Kevin Leonardo's iconic Nair video. If y'all don't know, there was this Asian guy on YouTube who posted a video that was extremely educational honestly, um, about him explicitly narrowing his butthole. And it went so viral, I'm pretty sure every single person in Gen Z have seen it. It was an Asian person just owning being a bottom. And it was so refreshing to see because a lot of people in the Asian community, when they're faced with this like effemicization and kind of castration compared to white counterparts, um, like to remasculinize themselves by going to the gym, getting bigger, and etc. But Kevin just owned it. She owned it, babes. I don't really know Kevin's beliefs, attitudes, or background of anything else except for that video. But looking at that incident alone, I was just like amazed. And it was done in like almost an empowering way because it was framed educationally. Anyways, for this art piece, I was taking the idea of castration for Asian men and oil painting on plastic sheets so that I could print make and every time I made an addition, the oil paint would slowly kind of fade away into the cellophane yellow frame. So in this way, it was like symbolically annihilated quote unquote, which just means that like it's not there anymore, like the PP is gone, the PP went away, and this is what it looked like in the end. I was pretty happy with it, but we'll see where it goes. I just got an iced latte and it tastes so damn good. It's exactly what I need right now. This week I made a lot of art. I've been doing sketches, re kind of conceptualizing what I want to do in the future for my art, how I can incorporate like 3D elements to certain drawings or paintings that I create to make them not more interesting because I feel like that's a lazy term to use, but just more... Uh... Just more something, y'all. As much as I want to experiment with different techniques in painting, I'm realizing that you can only do so much in a rectangle. And while I'm trying to play with the borders to be part of kind of the content of each piece, of cartoon character feeling contained and the body restraint to this canvas, I want to break out of that soon because it's just getting boring, babes. Like, every time I make a new art piece, which has been like a lot lately because drawings are very quick and intuitive, I just pull out another damn rectangle and I'm like, what the am I doing with this damn rectangle? Like, why is this not a fun little shape? And so I'm gonna try to create those shapes myself. I'm trying to think more of like Sarah Z, who incorporates these large, very precarious looking structures in her work. And she most recently had a solo show at the Guggenheim. I wish I got to see in person, but I'm in LA and that's in New York. So I didn't, but it's just like a vibration, babe. It's just a fucking vibration. Also in more news, I realized that I'm literally incompetent and lazy. I hate being unproductive and I haven't been running these past couple weeks. I haven't been reading as much as I want to. I've been watching TV shows and every single time I eat, I just need a damn motherfucking TV show to play so I can just start munching. If I don't have something going on in the background, whether it's Trisha Paytas' podcast, Channel Mojo's podcast, like I just cannot start grubbing. And I like door dashed things for the first time the other day. And I was like, oh my God, this feels so nice. It's really expensive, but I didn't realize how nice it was because people are always like, oh my God, like I just be door dashing things and da 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 da. And I'm like, babes, like, why would you do that? I get it now. I guess the title of the video is probably gonna include some type of like queer thing in it. So let me just talk about my dating life yet again. I've only been liking people that absolutely want nothing to do with me. And I think that's like amazing. Babes, to me that's a green flag because then it doesn't mean anything has to happen. But then if I suddenly express interest in someone and they respond back, 
babes, like, that's not what I wanted. Like, couldn't you get that? Why didn't you read my mind? Like, why did you respond? That's literally crazy. I like things that are one-way communication because then, like, it's just me being a crazy person and looking absolutely desperate. Um, and from their point of view, they're like, what the f is wrong with this person? But then if they respond, I'm like, like, icked out by them liking me. I don't know, it's a whole thing. It's so bad that I actually need to fix myself. I don't know what's wrong. And it's crazy because in my work, it's very sexy or it deals a lot with sexuality, but, but I have yet to like really dive in in person what that means for me personally. A lot of the things I'm imagining in my works are imagined, they're fiction. It's like a creating a mythology of like sexuality and like bodily autonomy and, and what it means to grow and develop and change. So basically it's just about me, which it sounds so narcissistic and maybe it is, and I'm just like so in denial of it being narcissistic, or maybe I've just coded narcissistic to be a bad thing. Well, it's quite shallow of a read where narcissism or narcissistic behaviors can actually be positive in a couple ways. And I always say, I don't feel like I have to justify my artwork and why I make it, but babes, I always do. I always end up explaining it. For me, I wanted originally to just have a bunch of other subjects other than myself in my work. However, I realized that there was a certain amount of violence when they are reduced to an image or like an art piece or like a fine art work that they have no control over how it's gonna be read. And so subjecting myself to that violence seems like the safest option right now. But again, it goes back to like narcissism. Like why in the world would my work out of every single other person's be so influential to the point where it could like damage someone's life that I paint? Like, girl, I have to get over myself, but like, I can't, I can't. I don't know why, but there are some days, y'all, where I'm just like, I need to download every single dating app and make a profile and just start liking every single person. And I'm at that point. I think it's the holiday season. Something's in the air, y'all. No, it's more like everyone else is getting cuffed and I see everyone having like cute kind of photos with each other. And it was especially hitting with those damn couple Halloween costumes. I'm just like, babes, like, why can't that be me? We know why it can't be me. I'm literally actually mentally ill. Oh yeah, I'm investigating, investigating, like I'm fucking Nancy Drew or some shit. Like, no, I'm investigating cellophane and what it means to me and like the plasticity of gender that comes with that, what it means to be collapsed in this plastic form, vacuum sealed, thinking about like the abjectness of the color yellow and potential and like the fluid of oil paint and gamsol getting trapped in between this plastic material. I'm just spewing information. Oh my God, yes. The first thing I wanna talk about is the Art Talk Collective. Y'all, a year ago, I started gathering slash curating just like a couple of friends was what it started out to be. And then those friends added more people into this kind of Discord chat where we all talk about art. We have a couple meetings here and there, even though I've been flopping recently and we haven't been having that many meetings, but it was supposed to just build community within a group of creators on social media who share a similar passion for the arts and creativity because girl this shit is isolating so i created this group chat we had a project called the traveling sketchbook which is still in progress like but which is still getting shipped around i'm trying to organize a magazine and a website where all of our profiles can be added and our work can be curated and published and sent out to different galleries because a big part of the art talk collective is that as social media artists we're often reduced to this unseriousness in the work because we're explicitly tied to reproduction and commodification and that's seen as a bad thing in the art world because it inherently goes against the exclusive mentality of white wall galleries and so when we do try to push our work in these spaces that are very institutional it gets hairy i'm trying to organize a bunch of random stuff that has us be taken more seriously without compromising our own abilities it's just more of like a y'all couldn't see the talent that was behind each person but we have messages and stories to tell that are as important as the people who traditionally went to art school and got their mfa at yale and then did residencies at the met at mocha and da -da -da -da. it's exciting but also i've been so inconsistent with it so i feel really bad about everyone who kind of kind of not relying on me but I guess because I started it, like, they're kind of relying on me to organize and mobilize, but I just haven't been doing that. It's just a very big learning curve on how to build community, and so I'm trying to, like, practice that in this Art Talk Collective. That's it, babes. Oh my god, another thing. Another fucking thing. The last thing I'm going to talk about in this clip, because I know it's a long-ass clip. I've been trying to start a shop. So if y'all don't know, I have a website, brettpark.net. At first I wanted .com, but honestly .net is kind of like a vibration, babes. Like I kind of love it. Anyways, on the site, I'm trying to add a storefront where I sell original drawings. And these are very simple drawings that I'm selling, hopefully for like 
20 bucks and just getting it in the hands of people who want to purchase my work because I've actually never really opened a storefront. Like I've tried to in the past and it kind of worked, but not really. Oh my God, what I really want to do is I want to give everyone two pieces secretly y'all will know the vibe the one they purchased from the storefront and i'm gonna throw in something extra and it, on the back of it will say give this to a special person in your life and so in that way i'm like throwing off the value of things because if i say this art piece is worth 20 dollars all of a sudden you get it in your hands and it's twenty dollars but if you get the art piece from someone close to you being like oh wow this artist gave it to me and wanted me to give this to someone else and out of all the people i have in my life i chose you suddenly that piece is not worth $20. That piece is imbued with a certain amount of energy from the person that they received it from. And that object enters a realm of outside commodity almost. When they say friendship is magic in My Little Pony, I literally think they mean it because friendship literally is fucking magic. And this isn't like a completely original idea. I was first inspired to do this by an artist named Dayatana Singh. She makes these mini galleries that are in book format. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna give 10 books to a person and they have to give nine of those books to other people. And then that way she's like, there's a totally different value of the art piece and it exists outside the art world market. And then people, if they wanna resell the book cause they can do whatever they want with it, like they could feel weird cause they're like got it as a gift and like, why are you selling a gift? Anyways, those are the thoughts of my brain. Um, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do right now? I don't know, I'm probably gonna paint. Yeah, I'm gonna paint right now. I will see y'all very soon. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Is it going? Oh, yeah. 30 seconds in. Um, hello, everyone. I'm here with... Angelo Lontok. Or if you're pronouncing it right, it's Lontok. We're in Angelo's studio. Do you want to give a studio tour, Angelo? You can grab the mic now. Uh, sure. I have two done paintings and one that's like a third of the way there. This one... I also brought this one in today. They're supposed to like go together conceptually. And I just want to like have this as like reference so I can like, as I'm working on this, I also want to like reference this. They're also the same size, which was on purpose. And then move out of the way. Yes, get sir. out, get out, get out. Oh, you knocked over my water. It's okay. It's okay. Do you help with this one? Sure, yeah. So we're gonna unveil Angelo's third piece. Yes. So here it is. This is what I've been working on for like two months. Um, it's a little floppy right now. I, I'm like collaging like pieces of canvas together. There's like glue as backing and then like also like pins for like general placement. I want it to have like kind of loose, but I need to sew it. And I don't want to sew it just yet because I want to work on my other paintings. Now we're going to sit down and ask rapid fire question. The first question, gay son or thought daughter? Thought daughter. Why? I don't believe in gay sons. Oh my God. Now rate me out of 10. Personality-wise. Three. Three? So mean, so rude. Not a single ounce of positivity in your body. You just gave me a three. Yeah. So how am I being the negative one? Now look at you being all defensive. Now rate me based on looks. Two. How sexy I am. One. This is not okay. Now should I rate you? Personality, I'd say, I mean, me, actually, it's a seven, but then the times I saw you doing your accent, it was a five, it dropped to a five. He starts doing this accent. Oh yeah, it's because um, this past summer, I watched Dare Girls on Netflix, and I was so obsessed with the accent, with, oh my, I haven't done my Irish accent in a minute. Like, I'm like slipping out of it. Wait, I need to like, I don't understand what's your problem with my Irish ac accent. How is it that people like you are so discriminatory to Irish people like me? So there it is. <laughs> Out of all my art pieces, which one did you hate the most recently? This isn't like about the quality of it, more like my ability to consume it, but your performance pieces, when it was in your show, it's like, I appreciate it from an artistic POV, but also I can't watch it. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Wait, like it's like uncomfortable or like you just couldn't watch it? Uncomfortable. Really? I thought people were just laughing at me. I think it's because I know you that like I, it's like weird, like, like I know that like, you're the one who like made it and you're the one who like put it out there. But at the same time, there's like a level of like, voyeurism where it's like, I, it feels illegal that I should be, uh, that like I'm in a space where I can even watch that. Okay, so which one did you hate? Mm -hmm. I think your earlier pieces are weaker, at least my opinion. I can't really explain why. I'm just like more visually drawn to like your more recent. 
ones mm-hmm. with that category. Like when I first introduced the cartoon character, or like the earlier, as in like last semester when I was doing more realism. Like I, I'm ignoring I'm ignoring your realism ones. Got you. For this comparison, I'm just saying that like attempts to like break off of realism versus your more recent ones. Okay. Wait, I love that. That's why I improved. Mm-mm. Oh, favorite artist you're looking at right now? Do we, are we still recording? Are we? Oh yeah, favorite like art piece or like animation or anime or cartoon series or just like any form of art that you've been like obsessed with recently i mean not from like an artistic view of you but the closest thing is like i've been watching adventure time oh my god yeah like the fiona and cake no i'm like the original but like only because like like on twitter like i saw so many people talk about fiona and cake that i was like damn i never even finished like the original show so yeah. like i'm on season two now so what's a piece of tea you can drop right now about usc roski do you like it or do you hate it asking a roski minor like okay. i'm very like out of the loop. You can judge, you know, facilities. You can judge the bathrooms. So, Roski has, like, two buildings, right? And, like, we're in one of them. But, like, using the bathroom, like, I go out of my way to walk to the other building because I just fucking hate the bathroom here. The bathroom's, like, smelly. It feels like a park bathroom, and I mean that in, like, the worst possible way. I think it honestly might be worse than a park bathroom because usually park bathrooms have ventilation at the top, but this is just, like, a closed closet, and there's... It just smells. Yeah. No, I'm just like, this institution has so much funding, but I feel like we're fighting for our lives at Roski. Um, there you have it. Angelo hates USC as a whole and thinks that um, we should burn this place to the ground. Is this enough proof that I have friends, y'all? I don't know. But also, Angelo stole my hairstyle like multiple huh? times. Huh? Last year, I had this exact same haircut last fall. So Angelo's a, a year late. What do you have to say about the oh, dyed mullet? Yeah, you did have a dyed mullet. I did. Okay, but like in my defense, in my defense, I specifically did this for like, because like my friends insisted, because I have friends, my friends insisted that I would be Jeremy for Halloween. You know, Jeremy from Phineas and Ferb, who has like a mullet-ish haircut. Yeah, because I have friends, by the way. Well, it was first when you just dyed your hair in general. Then it went to the dyed hair. Then you went to like your natural. And then I went to dyed again, but dyed mullet for the fall. The way I'm commenting, like the most basic hairstyle. And I, know, you I, know. Me, like, <laughs> I mean, like, but you did. Yeah, I did go bald like beginning of the summer. You did go bald. But I went bald. I know. But the difference is that I made it all artistic because I bleached it or I had a friend bleach it. I had friends bleach it and I had friends do a design on the back of my head. Can I insert a photo of the Jollibee one? Sure. Is it on your Instagram? Can I just like screen grab it later? I'll just do a zoom in. This is too much. Um, it's here. I'll yeah. do like, I'll like post a photo. It's here. Yeah. So Angelo copied my head shape too. I think that's ridiculous. Um, okay, that's it. That's it. Y'all are stalkers. Oh my God. That was brilliant, Angelo. Oh my God.